I first heard utterances of this man's name about 18 years ago when my mother, the late Kate McGarrigal, and her sister Anna, along with my brother Rufus Wainwright, returned to Montreal from something mysteriously called the Transatlantic Sessions. They seemed completely on cloud nine, having found their version of heaven on earth. Rufus was very pleased because he had now been on television, and you could say it was the beginning of his career. But the girls, Kate and Anna that is, seemed to both have fallen in love with the same man and his instrument, <laughs> Mr. Ali Bain. They were positively giddy about him and his playing. You couldn't shut them up about it. Years later, I was invited onto the show to see for myself what all the fuss was about. And of course, when I met Allie and Jerry Douglas, I too was very moved by the experience of being on that particular show. I've been given words to describe Ali's playing, such as superb, amazing, and unmatched, but I would like to add to that by saying that it is also very different. And his tone and the voice of his fiddle is both vulnerable and brave. A musical genius taught by a master too, his pedigree dates back to the 1960s with Jerry Rafferty and Billy Connolly in The Humble Bums, and he clocked up three decades in Boys of the Luck. He's one of the driving forces behind the acclaimed Transatlantic Sessions, and this year he will celebrate a 25-year musical partnership with Phil Cunningham. He's an ambassador for Scottish music and a powerful advocate of traditional music. So please put your hands together to celebrate this man and his music, a BBC Radio 2 Folk Awards Lifetime Achievement Award goes to Mr. Ali Bain. <laughs> Thank you, Martha. I loved her mom, Kate, very much. Great, great singer, great musician, and her father, too, yes. Loudon, who I had some wild days with when I was much younger. <clears throat> it's 45 years since I packed up my fiddle and left Shetland and came down here to Glasgow. And at that time, there wouldn't have been enough musicians of my age in Scotland to half fill the front row of the concert hall here. So I would say that if you're talking about achievements, my biggest achievement is being a part of a group of people who tried to resurrect our cultural music, which was, which was very, very low at that time. And, uh, And when I look around this place tonight and I hear all the young musicians up on the stage playing, that's, for me, a great achievement. And for all of us, uh, the TMSA brought me down here to play at the Blair Gorry Festival with Arthur Argo. Arthur was a, a producer for the BBC and he became an agent and on his books, he had me and Billy Connolly and Barbara Dixon and he just never realized what a great chance he had. But <laughs> he was a, a wonderful guy who won the football pools and went to America and had Pete Seeger and Reverend Gary Davis and brought them here to Aberdeen to play at the first Aberdeen Folk Festival. So people like that, and I have to thank in my life, 
uh, Mike Alexander and here and, uh, and Douglas Eady, who we've worked in, in television to not only promote folk music, but to bring young Scottish artists in, into the company of Alison Krauss and Mary Chapin Carpenter and James Taylor and let them learn from these great artists. And that's what, to my mind, what the transatlantic sessions are about. So thank you. Thank you to the BBC for this award. And uh, Danny Thompson told me not to call it a Lifetime Achieving Award. He said, call it the Lunchtime Award. <laughs> and he said, I'm not dead. You can still ring me. <laughs> so and he's, he's sitting out there somewhere. So thank you very much.